What's up everybody? Well today I'm here to show you another vacuum that just joined my vacuum collection and it is another Hoover. My collection at this point is pretty much turning into a Hoover gold mine. So here I present to you today a Hoover Power Drive Supreme. The third Power Drive Supreme to come to my channel. Fourth Power Drive altogether to well, actually, fifth to be on my channel, but the fourth one to join my collection. There is so many versions of the Hoover Power Drive, it's not even funny. There was the base beige colored one, then there were like four different color schemes for the Supreme version. There was this bright green, which is the same one featured in the infomercial. There was also red, which I also have, and there was also dark blue and black, and there were turbo power versions of the power drive, and there was even a very rare version that I'm looking all over for. There was a version that was actually branded Kenmore, sold exclusively at Sears, and that one has a whole lot of modifications done to it specifically for Sears under the Kenmore name. But anyway, how I got this one was I actually got this at a local pawn shop in my area for only $10. So I kind of thought $10 for something like this, there must be something wrong with it. And unfortunately, yeah, that kind of was the case. But... I got this on the day of St. Patrick's Day, the day I uploaded the video of the Dirt Finder power drive. I got this and another vacuum, which I will show later on, on the day of St. Patrick's Day. And when I got this home, this needed a whole bunch of repairs done to it. The first one is the drive cable was broken. And actually it wasn't really broken broken, but the little tab that mounts into the upper handle piece was busted off or was sheared off. So I had to get a new cable because of it. I also had to get a whole upper handle piece because the mounting point inside there was broken off. And because of that, the transmission, although it was working perfectly fine and didn't make any noise, but it was stuck in reverse. And as I replaced those parts, and have adjusted the self-propelled to get it in its sweet spot. And with a bunch of extra parts here and there, like a, a new used hose, a furniture guard that was missing when I got it, a new used brush roll, and even a upgraded fan impeller inside the motor, here is where it sits today. And I will admit, as far as repairs goes, I spent more than I should have. And frankly, I should have moved on and found another one, but I have determination and all that hard work definitely paid off, I will tell you that. So anyway, let's give you a walk through of the machine. You have right up here, this is the brand new handle piece. And here it controls your self-propelled that, that moves up and down, depending on how you apply force of the vacuum, pushing for pushing down like this will basically move the vacuum forward. Pulling back will pull, obviously do the obvious. And you can turn this off if you so desire. And you have down here your handle mounted power switch, main power switch at that. So coming down here, we have your onboard tools. You have your crevice tool, dusting brush, and your crevice tool. This didn't come with its attachments. I actually got these used off eBay, and they are in fairly good condition. I even came with an extension wand, which I got that separate from the hose, which... These hoses for these power drives are getting harder and harder to find. As you can see, it mounts 
on the back like so. Connects in like that. And here's where the hose slides in from the side and, and slides in like that. I really don't like the design of this particular style tool caddy. I like the later versions where you, you basically it locks in from the top instead of clamping it on the side because this eventually loses its, its tension as it ages and it, it tends to f fall out all the time and it doesn't mount good. So that's why a lot of the hoses on these early style power drives went missing is because this, this weakly designed side mount clamp so move up here to the back door. You have your Hoover Power Drive Supreme lettering up top. And right here you have a little air freshener. Right here you can put a little tablet in there to give the, the machine a fresh smell when you're using the cleaner. You even have a little bag check indicator right here. Pretty interesting setup for a direct air vacuum, I will say. It's actually on this little hinge right inside here. And basically the bag applies force to this back piece right here. It slides the bag check out when the bag is full to let you know that you need to change your bag. Pretty cool design for a direct air. I'm glad Hoover was able to solve that issue. And inside here you do have your HEPA generic type Y bag which filters out so much better than even the genuine paper bags of the time. You can see right in here you have your power cord right here and even the self-propelled drive cable deep inside there. But anyway, even though these Type Y bags are a little bit smaller than the Type Zs, you get much better, better filtration out of these, even the generic ones filter very good for being a HEP, HEPA cloth bag. The thing I like about these is they basically help maintain suction throughout the entire vacuuming process, basically 100% compared to paper bags. Also, you get better filtration. Right here, you have your self-propelled, energy efficient, 99.9% .9 microfiltration down to five microns. So as we come on down here, you have right here your four position carpet height adjustment. And you have your cleaning effectiveness per amp rated at 22, one of Hoover's famous marketing techniques back then to make higher end models more expensive and appealing to, to buyers. Self-propelled lettering right here, Hoover lettering up there, prominent Hoover symbol on the other side, brushed edge cleaning, it uses only 7.8 amps. You also do have a little cleaning tool port right here, which one thing I really do not understand about these power drives when they met, when they came out is that they don't come with an automatic hose like their non-self-propelled counterpart, the Dimension, which I really don't understand why Hoover did this because the predecessor, the Power Max, came with an onboard permanently mounted hose, some of the higher end models. And when the vacuum is put in its upright position, a valve closes off going to the head and all of it goes through the hose. So Hoover could have totally retained it with this, with this design. But no, they decided to cheap out and, and have a separate hose that should be stuck in whenever you want to use your tools. But you now let's go ahead and tip the machine back to show you the underside. Right here you do have your new used brush roll right here. I say uh, new used because the bristles on this are in better condition than the original brush roll I got with it. And they are very nice and stiff. So it definitely still cleans good even though the bristles are a little bit worn down. And also the bottom plate is held on by these little clamps here that you just pull that off and the bottom plate just slides off so you can change your, be your belts like so. 
right here shows you the the belt belts. The big one is for your brush roll, and the small little one down there is for your self propel belt. So let's go ahead and put this guy back on. Clamp this thing back down. Right underneath here are the little drive wheels for your self propelled drive. Before we untip this thing back up, let's go ahead and show you the model number on the back. Right here, this is Hoover Cleaner model U6329 930 by the Hoover Company, North Canton, Ohio. 120 volts, 60 hertz, 7.8 amps. There's your bag type Z. And your two belt models, one for the brush roll and one for the self-propelled. And to serial date these, the first four digits decode the month and the year. So the first two is the month, third and fourth is the year. So 03 and 95. So this vacuum was manufactured in March of 1995. For household use only, made in the USA. That is one thing I love about these old Hoovers is that they're American made. And right here is an extra belt that came with the machine when I got it. It's probably no good anymore since it's been sitting here for God knows when or how long. But anyway, enough of that. Let's go ahead and release the cord here and We'll get you a demo of this thing running. The cord is very nice and long, I will say. This got to at least be a 34 foot long cord. And although this isn't the original cord, because the other one was very torn up and damaged, and this cord is almost perfect. I say that because there is a little piece right here that's wrapped in electrical tape. And it's hard to find a good used cord for these things because they're a proprietary part with no alternate replacement. I mean, I don't see any aftermarket companies that make cords for these machines, which planned obsolescence like that really annoys me. Because these are great machines, and it's too bad parts are almost nearly unavailable for them. So anyway, there right there is the weird, quirky little dual release pedals that Hoover did on these, as well as their predecessors, the Power Maxes and the Concept 1s and 2s. Step on either side to release it into its vacuuming position. So now let's go ahead and turn the self-propelled on. And we're going to turn this thing on and give you a demo of it running. And one thing I would like to point out is the motor that's in this, the fan in it is not original. This is a retrofit 20 blade fan impeller that I put into this. Simply for the fact that it changes up the sound of the motor quite a bit. And you got to keep in mind also, since this machine is part concept and part elite... The lower base is a concept, but as a modified upper dimension body, it still has an elite style motor inside of it. And the fan part number for these is the same as a non-self-propelled elite. So even the 20 blade retrofit fan will fit this. And so I put that in just to kind of give it an idea of how this thing would sound when it's running. And normally this thing is very loud to begin with. So normally I would say headphone users turn your volume down, but I say you, you're still free to listen. You can still turn your volume down at your own discretion, but this thing is effectively now the most quiet elite style upright I have ever used since I put that new fan in. And all on top of that, you get a little bit more suction and airflow out of this guy. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on and show you it running. So here we go.
runs very nice and quiet, doesn't it? This is probably the quietest elite style machine I, I've I've ever made. And not only that, but it draws so much more airflow with this upgraded fan that it performs much better than it used to. And before we end the video, let's go ahead and demonstrate this thing in tool mode. So basically just pull the hose off, open up this little trap door, and simply connect the hose down in like such. Now, one thing I would like to point out is don't expect miracles as far as suction goes. Since this is a direct air machine, this tends to produce more airflow than suction. But it's definitely pretty good for what it is, especially with the upgraded fan impeller. In its, in its path, in its spot. There you go. Great machine. I really wish Hoover still made vacuums like this. And although this design was pretty good, it was later succeeded by the wind tunnel version. Well, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed this video on the Hoover Power Drive Supreme. Be sure and stay tuned, and don't forget to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.